Welcome to this presentation. Today's question is about angle properties of a circle. In the figure below, AD is the diameter of a circle, center O, angle FAD is 64 degrees, angle EFD is 30 degrees, angle ADB is 50 degrees, and length AD is 7 centimeters. So we have the diagram just as described. We have angle 30, 64, and 50, just as explained. And then AD, which is the diameter here, is seven centimeters in length. Then part A, giving reasons, determine the size of the angles. FED for part one, DCB part two, and then part three, the reflex angle DOB. And then finally, we look at part B of the question, determine the area of the shaded region. So just as we have this part. Okay, let's begin with the first part. Giving reasons, determine the size of the angles, FED, DCB, and the reflex angle. So before we answer those, we will be required to fill in the angles in the diagram, and then later on, go to the questions. So let's begin. We'll begin with these two angles, the angle at F and at B. Considering that AD is the diameter, we take note that it's the diameter because it passes through the center of the circle O. So the diameter will always obtain angle 90 degrees at the circumference of the circle. And that means at B we have 90 degrees. So it subtends angle 90 at the circumference. And also on this other side, the same AD subtends angle 90 at this point F. So given that this is 90 and considering triangle ADF, we'll have 90 plus 64 plus this angle giving us 180 degrees. So we're going to take 180 minus the sum of this angle and this angle, and that should give us 26. Okay, we can also consider the same for this other triangle, ABD. We have 50 plus 90, that is 140. 180 minus 140, here we need to have 40 degrees. Angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Once you're done with that, consider the cyclic quadrilateral ADEF. And we know that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral usually add up to 180 degrees. So this angle at E and angle at A are opposite, and therefore 64 plus this angle should be 180. So we take 180 minus 64 to give us this angle here, and that is 116 degrees. Also, considering FDE, that is a triangle, 30, plus 116 plus this angle here should be 180. So we're going to take 180 minus 30 plus 116. 30 plus 116, that is 146. So 180 minus 146 should be 34. So here we have 34 degrees. Another thing, considering EDC, that is a straight line, and then at this point, the angles on a straight line should add up to 180 degrees. So we will take 34 plus 26 plus 50 plus this angle, equate it to 180, and then use that equation to get this angle. So that will be like having 180 minus the sum of these. Now, if we do that, this angle should be 70 degrees. Again, let us consider this triangle, triangle ACD, the bigger triangle there. Then the angles of a triangle should add up to 180 degrees. So here we have as 40, here 50, here 70. And then we can use that to get the missing angle at C. So we take 40, plus 50, 
plus 70 plus angle at C equated to 180 degrees and then get the angle at C. So 50 plus 70, that is 120. 120 plus 40, that is 160. 180 minus 160 gives us 20 degrees, which is for the angle at C. I think up to that point, we are set. Oh, sorry, let's introduce this radius at that point. So we know that the angle subtended at the center of a circle by a chord is always twice the angle subtended at the circumference by the same chord. So we have chord BD subtending an angle at the center. We should be twice the angle subtended by the same chord BD at the circumference. So if at the circumference we have 40 degrees, then at the center we have twice 40, and that is 80 degrees. We can now go to the questions. Giving reasons, determine the size of the angles, FED. So FED, we already determined it. FED, it's 116 degrees. So we say angle FED, that is angle FED, is 116 degrees. And the reason, remember when we're determining this angle, we were considering the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral, which add up to 180 degrees. So we say opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. So that is the reason. Now for part two, angle DCB. So let's look at it. D, C, B, so the angle is 20 degrees. So we write it down, 20 degrees. And the reason, remember when you are getting angle 20, we consider the triangle ACD, that is angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So the reason is angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Okay, let's move to part three, the reflex angle DOB. So in the diagram, we have angle DOB, which is 80 here. And therefore the reflex angle is the angle on this other side, this here. And that we obtain by subtracting 80 from 360. Remember angles about a point should always add up to 360 degrees. So if we already given this as 80, then the reflex angle should be 360 minus 80. So the reflex angle DOB is just 360 minus 80 degrees, and that should be 240 degrees. And the reason will be, so remember how we obtain this angle. We looked at the property that the angles about a point adds up to 360 degrees. So that is the reason we are going to give. So angles about a point add up to 360 degrees. Now let's look at the last part. Determine the area of the shaded region. Now let's consider this diagram. We have the shaded region. So in order to determine area of the shaded region, we love to consider this. From O to D, that is the radius, we can label it 3.5 centimeters. So this is 3.5. O, B is also 3.5. Remember, we've been told AD is 7 centimeters and AD is the diameter. And therefore, the radius is half the diameter, which is 3.5 centimeters. So we are going to consider this sector. We have sector ODB, this sector here, with the angle subtended at the center as 80 degrees. So let me just redraw the diagram here. So 
So we want to determine the area of the shaded region. Here we are going to first of all determine the area of the sector and then we subtract the area of the triangle that will leave us with the area of the shaded region. The shaded region is referred to as a segment. So we're going to find the area of the segment which is obtained as area of the sector minus area of the triangle. So let's determine the area of the sector. Area of the sector is given as theta over 360 pi r squared, and then we'll have to subtract the area of the triangle, which is given by the sine formula, a half a b sine theta, where theta is the angle at the center in both cases. So let us do our substitutions. Theta is 80 degrees over 360 times pi, which is 22 over 7 times the radius, which is 3.5. So radius squared, 3.5 squared minus a half AB. So AB are the two sides of the triangle, which happens to be the radius here. So we have times radius squared, that is R times R. We multiply by sine of the angle at the center, 80 degrees. Working out this, for this first part, we are going to get 8 and 5 over 9, that is from my calculator. And then the next part, I'm getting 6.031947. So when we subtract this, what we need to get is 2.52. 36 square centimeters. And finally, with that, we mark the end of the solution to this problem. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.